Men, do you ever feel like you just can't get ahead? Like you're misunderstood? Like you have no one to talk to that truly hears you? And women, are you often frustrated, hurt, and saddened in your relationships with the men in your life? What if there were a community of like-minded men going through the same challenges that would support, hear, and understand what you're going through? Working together in unison to create understanding, intimacy, and strong connections. That's the Way of the Illuminated Warrior. Way of the Illuminated Warrior talk show is a forum of candid conversations for men and women about men. Heard every Thursday at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. Eastern Time on Dream Vision 7 Radio Network. Being a man today is not always easy. Until now. Welcome to another episode of the Way of the Illuminated Warrior talk show. I'm your host, Waska, and I am very happy today to introduce you to a friend and a brother on this beautiful journey of healing and illumination. Welcome to the show, Gustavo. How you doing, my brother? Thank you for having me, Perry. Waska, they call you Waska or Perry on the show? Well, it depends what you mean by they, but uh, <laughs> anyone that I introduce myself to, I introduce myself as Waska, and pretty much everyone knows me as Waska. But there is a, a whole other group of people from my past who are, you know, not comfortable with that. So I'm like, hey, just don't call me late for dinner, you know, call me what you like. <laughs> awesome. Thanks for, thanks for having me, Waska. Appreciate it. You got it, brother. So yeah, I thought this would be a really good conversation for the audience um, because we both are in alignment in a lot of ways um, with uh, putting out the intention for healing, for illumination, for connection, for community. And uh, I know you do a lot of the work uh, as we've discussed before to do j those things and more. So um, so let's speak a little bit about, uh, we'll start off with our journeys. If you wanna share a little bit about your journey, how you got involved with doing this type of uh, healing and, and light work. Yes, uh, let's start uh, with a little bit of a story. Uh, what an amazing opportunity. Um, I recall there's three pivotal moments, really powerful mom moments of my life um, that I took me to this path. Um, I remember being 15 and I was in school, in high school. I remember being uh, having a mentor. He was uh, my math teacher and he introduced me to this book, Wherever You Go, There You Are. And it's a Buddhist book. And so it really opened me up at that time. That book opened me up into uh, understanding. I had a sense within me that I, I was here to become enlightened, to be aware, to be awake, to a higher state of consciousness. And so I was already in the inquiry of that when I was 15. Um, uh, you move that forward when I was uh, 25, I started get, attending transformation experiential workshops. And when I did that, it took me to realize that I was, uh, my heart was shut down, that I was, I was angry at the world. I was angry at my relationships. I was not really taking a lot of accountability or responsibility for my own life at that time. I was 25 but by then. And I became really passionate about uh, exploring and pursuing personal development at the age of 25. So I started getting certified and started uh, coaching and applying what I was learning back then um, with some of these uh, coaches that I uh, involved myself with uh, and these trainings. Um, um, I became fascinated by how people function and how we, our habits create our, our life. And then, um, you know, it becomes, that becomes our life. Uh, and so uh, further down the road, long story short, I turned dirty and I, I had, um, I was in my exploration of consciousness. I, I got certified as a yoga instructor back then. A Qigong practitioner as well. Um, I started traveling. I went to Hawaii, which is really exciting. Um, and I realized that I was seeking. I became a seeker of, of wisdom and knowledge of how to know thyself. Basically, that was my mark. It's like, I need to know myself better. I realized that I was waking up to uh, uh, understanding that uh, the sum of my 
uh, actions in my life was the outcome, was the, the, the total sum of my behaviors and my beliefs and my feelings gave, gave me that outcome when I was 30, which was uh, pretty remarkable in a way. But at the same time, at the same time, as I was, as I was expanding and, and really exploring and traveling, I also found out that I was uh, hurt inside still. I thought I had overcome a lot of the pain and the suffering. So I made it a point when I was 30, 31, I had this longing, this, this desire, this burning desire inside my heart to, uh, to say, how do, how do I break away from pain and suffering? It was one of my questions. Uh, and I had a, a big desire to serve and to be able to help people. So I, I, I was helping people, but I was helping myself at the same time. Um, and so when I was 30, I went in through, through a dark night of the soul. I, I explored the, my shadow, what I call my shadow, my, my limiting beliefs, my limiting behaviors, my unconscious patterns of wounding, where I met uh, a partner at then at that time at the this is the the mother of my son and I uh, a lot got illuminated in that relationship where I saw a lot of the dynamics that uh, were being played out uh, as a form of reaction uh, and I discovered that a lot of that um, that uh, dynamic was due to my own behaviors that I adopted from childhood, from my parents, from, from my peers, from my culture. Um, so I ended up needing to break through, through that. So that's when I was 30. Now I'm 40. Um, I'm 40 years old. And um, it, it, I dedicated the last 10 years to the embodiment of that wisdom, to the, the awareness and the illumination of, of, of coming into wholeness, to bring together the light and the dark, to bring together the aspects that were not loved within myself. And I started deeply, uh, uh, very seriously, uh, uh, and playfully at the same time, uh, tapping into my wholeness. I discover a practice as uh, from the, the lineage of continuum, continuum movement by Emily Conrad in Hawaii. And I, I, I was able to tap into a structure where I was able to become more self-referential, more self-aware um, within myself to start exploring uh, the, my own story, my own beliefs, my feelings. And then I started loving myself and bringing myself back into wholeness. So here I am 10 years later, and uh, it's, it's an ongoing process. Um, I, I, my, my purpose and my way of expressing and sharing and facilitating has evolved. And here I am today with you. So I'm, I'm honored to be here. Thanks for letting me share. Basically, that just kind of wrap his, wrap, wraps it up in a, in a nutshell. And um, uh, it's such a beautiful journey to be here with you and to know that there's other men and women doing this deep work. Uh, so that we can improve the quality of our lives and we could have better uh, conscious relationships um, that um, ultimately bring about empowered way of living, an empowered way of living and a sovereign way. I like to seed the word here of sovereignty because that's been my path. Is I'm be, I've been defining what sovereignty is and what integrity is as a man in the world in the past, for the past three years specifically. Yeah. Well, that's beautiful, my brother. Yeah. Yeah. You put out a lot of good, uh, good vibes there. Yeah. Yeah. So where to begin? Yeah. So yeah, wherever you go, that's where you are. That's uh, that was a wonderful book that I recall very well. Um, I think my first book, uh, into the four or foray of, um, self-awareness that got me on that uh, path was, uh, the Celestine prophecy. I remember reading that and, um, by uh, Redmond, and um, that just kind of led me down uh, down the path of uh, seeking more knowledge and wisdom, uh, and getting to know myself as you had spoke about as well, because that's um, that's a huge part of the work I've done for myself, and I do with other guys also. Exactly what you said to know thyself. That is such a powerful, powerful statement. It's written on the the temple of Delphi, and that's what so Socrates. I was going to say Socrates from that 
that uh, that old movie with uh, those stoner dudes, you know, so creates in Beth Oven. But anyway, we won't go down that road right now. Um, to know thyself is really the highest form, I, I believe, of mastery to be able to uh, move forward and not just to uh, serve others, but when we could illuminate our own um, self consciousness in that way, then we really can be of service. So, um, yeah, to know thyself—that's that's the work, as far as I'm concerned. So, yeah, for me, um, when I started off as as a young dude, um, probably around the same time you were speaking, around 15, 16, 17. Um, you know, my parents got divorced when I was uh, 17. Uh, my grandmother, who I was super close to, passed at that time. And these were like really big, um, like heart awakenings for me, um, deep awakenings. Um, there was a lot of hurt and um, pain there as well. But uh, but I learned from those experiences. And I've, you know, for, for the listeners who know, I've uh, spoke about this many times. Growing up in an alcoholic family was a very challenging situation. Um, but fast forwarding on my journey um, and doing that that self awareness work uh, as you were speaking about as well was uh, was definitely reading a lot of books, but also getting in touch with other people who had a higher vibrational way of being. And uh, so I had teachers and mentors. Um, again, we share similarities. We spoke about this you and I before, as far as uh, qigong um, and yoga and um, you know things like tai chi and meditation and all those beautiful aspects that help get, get us back in touch with ourselves. So those are the practices that I like to really, I won't say fall back on, um, but but really to a degree I do fall back on them because I've noticed lately I have not been um, as diligent in my meditation practice and, and diligent, uh, I, I mean like doing it every morning. When I get up every morning and I sit on that cushion that's behind me and I just really just let it all go, you know, and, and, and don't have to jump right on my computer and I don't have to do just do all these other things that get my mind going in a million different directions. I get to just chill and sit on the cushion and, and come back home. So yeah, that is what it's all about, bro. Like finding ourselves. Yeah. Knowing ourselves. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm with you. Wonderful. Yeah. I love your space back there. It's just it's so spacious. Oh, <laughs> you, yeah. You get, yeah. Got space. the guitars around, the meditation and the yoga cushion. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's my sanctuary. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. So you alluded to being a dad, which is another um, similarity we have. You have uh, you know, one son, Itukai, and I have my three, Jonah, Kyle, and Ed. And uh, so let's talk a little bit about that, because that was a huge transformational change for me when I had my first son. That really woke me up and got me out of like, OK, it's time to be responsible and really you know, fulfill the vision that I had for being a father. And um, that was that, that was probably um, without really thinking about it anymore, the deepest um, transformational experience I had was becoming a dad because um, really there's nobody closer to us other than our parents, you know, um, even our, our partners and our spouses and all. I mean, it's not the same relationship as actually like co-creating, you know, another life. So let's talk about that. So let's talk about your relationship with your, your little man, Itukai. Sure. Thanks for asking. Oh my God, it warms my heart. I have uh, Itukai seven. He's going to be eight in January. Uh, he's been living with me for almost four years now. And uh, has been, that's been like the initiation of uh, truly awakening. I mean, I, I mean, I was doing this on my own, but then when, I, when he came into my life, a whole, whole new level of uh, Cult, uh, cultivating the elements of compassion, being present uh, as, a, as a father, as, as a masculine figure in the world, and yet finding uh, flexibility to be a mom. I also, so as a single dad, uh, those, so those are some of the challenges that I have had encountered is that I, I have been needing to be both for him for the past four years. And uh, it, it can be quite challenging. Um, although I don't just uh, leave all the 
giving of that myself. I have, I'm grateful enough to say that I grown into creating a community here in New York City. He has grandmother, grandfather, he has an uncle, he has close friends, and he has the presence of beautiful uh, sisters, female women who are nurturing towards him as well. And so that's beautiful. We'll be right back after this. Hey guys, this is Waska. Listen, if you're hearing my voice, there are no coincidences. Are you ready to get unblocked and take the next step forward, whether it's with relationship issues, finances, or just moving into the next phase to elevate yourself? Listen, bros, this is what I do. I'm here for you. Drop me an email at waska, that's W-A-S-K-A, at illuminatedwarrior.com. We will work on this together and take you to the next step. I promise you'll be glad you did. So talking about challenges, it's uh, the boundaries is huge like defining boundaries uh helping a child grow in a way where they have freedom and they have the space to be creative and be themselves in their essence and yet also having them to learn about the world and for my son it's like teaching him how to be um how to, how to have structure so my biggest uh, learning curve with him is, is I, I guess for most single parents or uh, I, I would dare to say is, you know, kids test our boundaries and oh, yeah. constantly, constantly they push, they push the envelope and he's done that. And he looks for my buttons. He looks to see what, what is going to get triggered because he wants to get a reaction. And I would say that, that, that is so, I like to go deeper into this because it's so in the, in, in the world, in our social behavioral ways of being, where uh, we have dynamics that are not longer serving our sovereignty, our evolution. And I've been really staying really strong in creating a container where we could grow in our um, in the most uh, beautiful way, healthy way, uh, conscious way. And so I've done everything I can with everything that I know plus getting some perspectives from other families to how to create those those spaces at home um, for him and for myself. And um, I'll, again, the main thing theme here is boundaries and uh, learning how to be awake aware and not necessarily if it, if there is a trigger, then move through the trigger. So I go through the triggers and I move through them and then I come back to my center. But I, it's it's normal for me to know that there is something that might come up that ultimately that triggers for me uh, leads to a uh, uh, movement forward in a new way, a new way of, of be, relating to him, uh, trying new things to make it work. So it's very dynamic. Um, but yes, the, uh, things like that, um, being, um, you know, things like very intimate for us, just since this is a cozy, warm space, you are facilitating such a beautiful space, Waska. Mm -hmm. uh, we do prayers at night. So he has a sense of intentional living, like wh wh who do you get to be in the world? So he says before bedtime, he said, I I'm, uh, I I'm, I'm going to do my best to be a, a generous, kind, loving, caring boy. And so things like that we do together is prayer. We light a candle, uh, things that are intentional. So I don't really subscribe to necessarily a religion or a dogmatic way of living. But uh, what I learn is that I, I strive for higher virtues and values that expands my consciousness. So when I see, uh, when I speak of something that's greater or benevolence or goodness in the world, then this is where, where him and I, we speak of like, okay, how can we be, be better people? And this is, this comes up and, you know, he goes to school, he goes to a private school. It's a uh, mindful, emotional, they, they're good at uh, letting them be connected with their emotions. So I'm really grateful that I'm able to provide that for him. Uh, but yet there's challenges in the behavioral aspect of society. So I'm a, as a visionary and uh, as I've been called for the past three years to step into sovereignty, uh, we have to shed and like shed layers of conditioning, I call them like conditioning from society. So because I don't have that kind of society built up around me yet, uh, we, we live in the contrast of this is the world that we're creating, him and I. And yet this is the, the culture that's around us 
in New York City, and we have we learn from that culture and people's behavior, but we also get challenged by it as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. New York City challenges. They, they go, the, the, the two terms go <laughs> hand in hand. Yeah. So you're you're in New York. I'm down in Asheville, North Carolina, uh, which people know immediately that I am not from down here, especially the, the natives. Um, so they guess pretty quickly that I'm from New York from my sharp wit. I'm sure it is, is what it is. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, I think uh, different uh, locations also call for a different way of uh, being in the environment because it really is. I mean, spending mm -hmm. my whole life in New York and then moving down here, I notice a huge contrast. Um, just from the from the ease of well-being. I mean, people are a lot more chill down south. Um, you know, there's other there's other challenges, of course, um, but it's interesting. Like raising uh, raising kids in an environment where there is a lot more uh, frenetic energy and stress and all. So uh, my guys are um, in their mid um, well 23 to 27 range right now so they're all up in uh, new england right now uh, but they they all grew up pretty much in on long island and actually ed he was in connecticut he's my bonus son i, I was with his mom for 10 years so i raised him from the time he was 10 to almost 20. so he grew up in connecticut and then on long island um, but i even even coming from connecticut to long island um there was there was a huge transitional shift there so um the areas that we raise our kids up in definitely have an effect on it um and you were speaking about boundaries. Yeah, um, healthy boundaries, man. That's been a huge aspect in my life, even um, for me with my family, just creating healthy boundaries when I was raising my my guys um, not to have uh, my parents and my sister and other people telling me how I should raise my sons. Um, that was a huge thing for me. So I created healthy boundaries around that because I saw what worked for me in my relationships with my parents. Um, so I took whatever the best of that was. And then I used my own um, sovereignty, as you said, and my own intuition. And I'm like, hey, this is this is a gift, the greatest gift that there is. I'm going to put everything that I have into raising my boys and I'm going to do it the way I want to do it. And if I make mistakes, which I'm sure I have, you know, but my intention has always been, you know, to first and foremost, make sure they're safe. And then just, just to be there, be present for and with them and to educate them and to share time. So um, I love hearing the stories that you share about you, your, your experiences with, with Itukai, because I remember when my guys were, you know, seven, eight years old and it, and it goes in a heartbeat, bro. It goes very, very quickly. So all the time we have with them is so vital and valuable. And, and then they grow up and they do whatever the heck they want to do anyway. That's just the way it is. <laughs> hey, also, I want to acknowledge you for sharing all of that with us today and with me. And as you know, the work that, that it takes to raise children and uh, the amount of time and effort and presence. And uh, I, I, I'm out of balance sometimes with the being present for him because sometimes his needs are greater. So he needs like a more recitivity, more feminine for more of the feminine in me. And um, I mean, I got better. So that was one of the challenges too, is I got better to listen to his cues when he was craving something, he would say, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. And that wasn't always craving necessarily food. He was just wanting to feed, feed himself because he wasn't able to, um, uh, he's not able to fully voice his needs due to some challenges that he had mm -hmm. um, when he was with his mom. So there was a transition there that was hard for him. And his mom is not around, hasn't been around for the four, past four years. So there's things that he, you know, we all have a void in the Buddhist tradition, I just want to refer to it as the hungry ghost. So we have a way to cope when we feel empty or not full or in lack. And so kids have that, adults have it. And I, again, it's beautiful to have a practice of, of, of mind, body awareness, emotional intelligence, where I feel like that's a prerequisite for a better world to be able to listen to those needs and to find balance and to nurture ourselves and nurture others but from a space of feeling full and uh, satisfied and in appreciation and gratitude, all these beautiful practices, as you yeah. know, it's like 
intentional ways like what are we grateful for and, and be uh, because society you know in a way feeds us with the the feeds the hungry ghosts it's like well, i want more and more and more and more of that so you put a kid in the new york city and they're like this thing land it's all over the place and they're being bombarded by subconscious programming you know saying one well, more 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 and more so no matter how much of a uh 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 light being we are or uh, we're in our path of, of ascension and enlightenment, there is the, the, con the conditioning forces around us and for kids and adults. And so we, we get cravings that are even just placed there hypnotically by our environment, you know, because we're, oh, we're yeah. so hot, you know, those, it's a good topic to talk about. But yeah, that's being one thing that he gets really, he wants to try it all. He seems, he, you know, he's growing, he's learning, he just wants it all. And then keeping him a check so that he feels he doesn't see the, the glass half empty, but sees the glass half full. And so when he came to me at the age of four, he had this just, uh, it could be part of his personality. It could be his dynamic with his mom, but he would always like uh, complain and see glass uh, half empty versus mm -hmm. seeing the glass half full. And uh, it's been a thing. I mean, helping to the best of my capacity to help him find gratitude in the in, at least in the areas that I know I could bring to him because he already sees a lot of beauty he has his own essence he has his own little soul and he sees beauty but when it comes to material things um I I have had to work it out and find balance in in all of that dynamic yeah, yeah that's that's always been challenging I think for a lot of kids and um yeah, you, a lot of the things you're speaking about uh, with the sacred feminine, which you know we know as men, we have sacred feminine within ourselves as men, um, and it's important to remember, especially if you're raising um, a, a young boy uh, as a single dad, um, to bring in those aspects of that sacred feminine as much as possible. Um, I'm not going to go into my whole story, but my my ex-wife, she had mental health issues, so I really had a as um, a necessity take on that maternal instinct and um and and learn even even back then what it was to be um in that sacred feminine not even knowing what that term was at the time you know so um having that at that presence and just really even listening more than than telling them okay you have to do this you need to do this don't do that and allowing them to really evolve in the way that they would in the womb as, as a metaphor, really, you know, because that's what they are doing inside their mom to a degree, you know, and as and as men, you know, we want to build and fix and and, and direct and and do all those um, those young, those masculine things where um, a lot of times, especially as young boys, they need that nurturing. They need that compassion. They need to feel that creativity welling up within themselves and to explore and you had spoken about before um, the testing. And yeah, I'm, I'm sure you tested your parents just like I tested my parents in whatever different yeah. ways, because that's how we we learn. Like, how, what are the boundaries? How far can we go? How far can we push them? How far are they going to let us go? So they all do that. And, um, you know, to a degree, we have to really kind of pick which of the, of the battles, so to speak, are worth um, teaching them a lesson because I went through that phase also. I'm like, everything was a lesson. And then I realized like, wow, you know, I wouldn't like this if my, if my parents were doing this to me, um, everything's a lesson. And there's ways that you could teach lessons without, you know, in a more subtle way, without always making it a lesson. And I think that's, um, more productive for them also, especially as being little kids, you, they, they have to believe whether they really do or not, that they have that freedom to do whatever they want. <laughs> and, you know, within a within a specified, you know, range of safety and, um, you know, and reality there. So, um, so yeah, yeah. Kudos, kudos for, you know, doing this really kind of uh, as a single dad, man. I know it's very challenging. So beautiful. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, brother. Another thing that comes up that he's learning at this stage, he's seven, he's going to be eight. He's he's seen the dualistic left right brain figuring things out of what's right what's wrong what can i do what can i not do and so he he's developed this way of speaking uh that he learns to then get a response when he's not getting the attention then he will oppose me constantly constantly opposition opposition no no this no that 
And then uh, I had had a, 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 a lot of difficulty with that uh, probably three months ago. And then I started implementing new ways where I, I wasn't triggered because a lot of him opposing me every time was just like, okay, it's not personal. But it's, it's hard not to take it personal when he's opposing every single thing. So it's hard to get things done. If, if well, let me ask you something. What do you see mm -hmm. in Itukai? What do you see in your son? Um, if you if you really think about it, that that was really little Gustavo. What do you see of, of yourself in him? Yeah, you know, um, he has a strong will, so he definitely has some of that. He is gonna he he. There's a sense of stubbornness that could come from both sides of the family. Uh, that could be part of his personality. I would say so, uh, and he is very strong will in his own way. Um, I would say he's very different than me. I don't see, uh, um, uh, he's, he is insightful. He has a lot of way of correlating information. So he's able to come to a conclusion. So he, he, he seems pretty wise when it comes to understanding how things work or storylines and narratives. He has great comprehension uh, when it comes to understanding storylines or, or, people to for his age so that's like wow like how is he doing that at that age and that but that's more the mind right the emotional part he he's very tender and that might be uh he's very vulnerable and um um that's the part that we've been doing some changes allowing him to be that but also understanding my understanding these are things that got imprinted from behavioral things in the past in the beginning of his his development and now we're in a different cycle he's going to be eight so the, the the needs are different the development is different um so i'm saying that uh in connection to him opposing is not that is wrong you know this is what i want to say it's not personal it's not wrong it's just it's a way of exploring uh the response or reactions of someone that's the way i see it now and the, now that i see it that way and i change my perception of it then I could say, okay, now I could soften and then I could playfully introduce other possibilities. So when 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 I'm I'm not responding or or pushing back in his opposition, then I, I'm able to collaborate with him and be team with him. Mm -hmm. But uh and then and then he likes me to take him by the hand and do things together. And I, that might be a developmental thing. Um uh, I'm I'm guessing. Uh, or that could be just him because I also know that in school there's other kids that are more autonomous and more independent when it comes to doing things. So I get evaluations from the teachers, um, people who are emotionally conscious to give me feedback. And so, yeah, it's, it's quite a fascinating topic. Kids, they're different. You know, there's kids that are more autonomous or independent, go out and do their own thing. Ituka is not one of those. He needs to be led and be connected to learn uh, through the process of connecting and doing something with someone. And I don't always cannot give that to him. Um, and so that, that, that's that, you know, that's, that's that for, for what's moving through right now, but uh, he's a beautiful soul. I see a lot of beauty, you know, that when we speak about developmental things, it's not that is wrong or, or anything is like that we all have challenges and uh, we all have things that we can improve, but he, he's a beautiful, joyful kid. He's connected to the ocean. He likes, uh, uh, we call him little scavenger. He likes to go uh, get things from the street and find little treasures here and there. Mm. And he loves that. Um, uh, that's one of the things that he really loves. I mean, I could, I have a list of things that he loves, but that's one of them that he, he's constantly at it, um, collecting things from that he finds outside on the street. Yeah. Mm, beautiful. Yeah. 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 I find, um, you know, my guys are very different than each other. Um, but when I look back, I, I see it like a reflection to a degree. Um, and, and my dad just had his six year anniversary of his passing. And I, he comes to me a lot in dream time. And I think a lot about him. Uh, I always said I'm very, very different from him. Um, because I, I kind of like in my mind, I was focused on, well, you know, he was an alcoholic and he gambled and um, he did all the things that that I did not like, and I didn't, you know, knock on wood, I didn't follow. Um, but, you know, we, we were in a good space before he passed. But I, I think more, especially because I miss him so much, I've, I've been reflecting so much more 
these past few years since he's gone. And I think about the things that I am similar to the ways he, he was. And, uh, and they're not, you know, I'm not going to say they're bad, they're good. Um, of course, not the vices, but, but just more mannerisms and the way he was. And I definitely get my, uh, my humor um, and that, that medicine that I use and, you know, to heal myself and hopefully for others as well from my dad. Cause he, you know, he was just, just a really funny um, people person type of guy. Um, so I just think about the things that now that, uh, that connected us um, in that way. And I look at my boys and um and you know and even that not to go off on a different topic but like if if my youngest was listening to this i, I would be upsetting him now and i have a really hard time because he he does not identify as a boy he wants to be called they and and you know i'm sick i just turned 61 years old man and i'm like i'm not going to make excuses but i'm set in my patterns and to me i wish there was a different word because they is a plural it means you know them over there and and to say you know uh they is just it's just it's just coming to be a challenge for me so a lot of times um i'll say you know you guys or you know my sons and and it's something that he does not like and i'm really working on that so i'm learning also at this age he's teaching me how he wants to be um, refer to and um, and and it gives me a whole different perspective because I'm not I'm not just the the older wiser teacher he is the younger wiser teacher so it's um as they get older there's a lot of different dynamics that that unfold and give us the opportunity to grow along with them and learn new things from them as well so you got a lot to look forward to there my brother <laughs> <laughs> yeah indeed yeah I, I hear that with everything that you're sharing. We'll be right back after this. Do you sometimes feel down, lost, or lonely? Are your finances feeling sluggish? Can your relationships use a healthy tune-up? Don't fear, bro. Help is here. Experience the benefits of connecting with other men who are going through similar challenges. Be supported in our safe, sacred, and inspiring monthly telecircle with the Brotherhood of the Illuminated Warriors. Connect with Waska for one-on-one -on -one mentoring with the first session completely free. What have you got to lose? Check out IlluminatedWarrior.com or send an email to Waska at IlluminatedWarrior.com. You're invited to step up your game and join us. You'll be glad you did. Yeah, I mean, how do we... Uh honor their journey and do, do the best to be role models and create, you know, have a foundation for them and then let them become their own personas, you know, then that's what they, your kids are, you know, they're older. So they, you know, it sounds like they, they gone through that journey of, of um, identifying themselves as who they want to identify as and how they want to identify as in the world. And, uh, it's a beautiful journey of unconditional love, right? We could yes. always uh, influence uh, our children, and yet they're they're gonna choose, and uh, it might not always be easy for the parents to um, to honor their choices, you know. And so that's the, I I I look forward to those challenges. Yeah, it sounds like that's part of the path for sure. I'm oh, I'm yeah. new in the game. <laughs> oh yeah, you, you won't seven. get away. You won't get away from them. So you, you can look forward to them or not. They will they will find you, my friend. <laughs> but uh, in all seriousness, it is a beautiful thing. Um, every stage, every phase. Um, you know, even when they were really young, people be like, ah, they're they're in their terrible twos or like you know whatever every phase was great i thought it was just such a blessing and and same same now um i'm really happy that they're as autonomous as they are um i don't hear from them uh which i look i look back when i was their age too i didn't call my parents every single week so you know i said hey i'd like to hear your voice once a week so we're all good with that you know um but i don't hear from them as much as i would like to but i have to remember hey they're young men doing their own thing and when we connect um, which is on a regular basis, but not, you know, not as much as I would like. <laughs> um, it's a beautiful thing and, and it's authentic and uh, we share in a beautiful way. So I'm very happy about yeah. that, you know, and Wonderful. I think about also, yeah. um, sorry, go ahead, man. What were you going to say? Yeah, well, I don't want to get you off track because what comes to mind um, and we might revisit that after you're done is I really started becoming 
stepping into my fatherhood basically last three years. And now that I'm 40, it's the way I'm thinking about parenting is different. And the way I'm thinking about the future for him and I is different. Um, and so, yeah, it's just, it's just now I feel like I'm, uh, I focus on very specific things. So maybe I, I wanted to ask, like, what are the specific foundational pieces that you gave your kids that they took on? Because that's what I'm focusing on right now. It's like, okay, this is the ways of being. This is the foundational values that I'm really passing down to my son so that I make sure that he he is going to be a good, good benevolent force in, in the planet. And so that's been my my train of thought. It's like, okay, I'm, 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 be, I'm doing this and I'm creating this, space for him and showing up this way daily so that he knows that he's safe that he knows that he's loved and that he has a strong foundation so he doesn't have to uh struggle or feel like the world's not a safe place which i struggle with so i'm passing down things that i didn't have personally because i wasn't really seen i shared my story with you and there was there was trauma in the family and there is uh, uh, you know, chaos and drinking and physical uh, uh, abuse and all of that. But that we all transcended that. My my dad stopped doing that at the age of 30. He's now 60 something. But that God that really make a, made an impact when I was a little child, when I was three, five years old. And so that stays with you. And I had to work through all of that from up until like 33, where I, I saw that that was affecting my relationship, how I was relating in the world and the women that I was attracting and that all of that has changed I, ha I have got, gotten tested in, the, in my in the women that I've been attracting to and I feel like I'm in a really bright place of where I have created a fertile soil for a new relationships to emerge because my blueprint is different and that's what I hear when we talk about illumination we talk about transcending the limitations and the imprints that uh, that stays in our body in our emotional body in our physical body that recreates the unconscious behaviors and unconscious manifestations of dynamics that no longer serve so i feel like i i done all this work and i continue to but i feel like i'm in a clear space of like what is my yes what am i my no i have discernment i understand most often what the dynamic is and I uh, and then the practices is, is self-love wholeness space is another huge thing for conscious relating even with children like when I have my own space I could I could have my own energy I'm clear I know who I am when when I spend too much time with a group of people then I become that energy because I'm just so yeah. empathic and receptive and then I always have to unplug always that's at least for me personally some people do very well maybe staying more with people but i highly recommend at least for myself and others is like making space even from your children and then coming back because that allows me had allowed me to um come with new lenses and a fresh mind and a fresh space of uh, a scene seeing my son in a new way it's like a groundhog day or a new day and a new new way of uh, uh, experiencing the world and choosing love over and over again and uh, in an evolutionary path where we're now we're like we know we're growing together my son and I and then in any relationship so I'm just saying this for any kind of uh, a relationship yeah 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 and I think that's a very good and valid point it's very important for uh, self-care uh, for everyone in every relationship so yeah to do whatever whatever it is it doesn't have to be yoga meditation qigong uh it could be working out at the gym it could be I, i'm a big proponent of getting into nature getting in touch with mother nature being out on the land as i say mm -hmm. uh, and then coming yeah. back into the relationships absolutely so um you know, you made a couple of really good points there. Um, so one thing you, you've mentioned was trauma. And I do believe that we have all uh, experienced some type of trauma and pain growing up in our lives. Uh, whatever level it is, doesn't matter quantitatively. Uh, we've all experienced it. We're really kind of a society of traumatized people really making our way out of what we went through. You know, um, there's a really great documentary uh, that this Dr. Uh, Mate Gabor put out there called The, Tr the Wisdom of Trauma. Yeah, if you've seen it, it's, it's very uh, profound and it, yep. it enlightens a lot of what a lot of us go through. 
And I think it's important to recognize that we have gone through um, trauma in our lives. So not to be so hard on ourselves and to give ourselves that space and, uh, and just keep evolving and growing. So to, um, to take a step back and answer the question that you asked me as far as like raising uh, my kids, um, I think two things that popped into my head when you said that, uh, one was um, the unconditional love, and the other was authenticity. So unconditional love, um, this is something that I went through uh, with the Illuminated Warrior Group started a few years ago that was with the topic and it took a long time because we were working on the chakra system so we got into the anahata the heart space chakra and, and unconditional love came up and i realized i don't even know at least at the time my, my statement was i don't even know if i know what unconditional love is and it was amazing how a lot of the guys you know through their stories and sharings we all kind of felt the same thing like what is that unconditional love so without getting too deep into that I will say um, the relationship and the feelings and the bond and the binding that I have with my uh, children is is unconditional love to me in, in every way, shape or form. So I think that's totally key. And that means allowing them to grow and to be whoever they want to be, because, you know, a lot of the things that we put out there like, oh, well, I want him to do this, you know, oh, I want my son to be a lawyer or a doctor, or whatever it is. I mean, that's that's a little bit of the extreme example. But but really p p imposing our will on them is not really um, encouraging them to be autonomous and to seek their own path and to find their own truth and to know thyself. So and that's and that's Indeed. difficult because a lot of times we think by saying, well, you're going to study this and you're going to do this and you're going to learn this, we're, we're do, being of service to them. And that's not necessarily true. So I think that uh, that autonomy is, is really key. And the other part, the authenticity, I think is more important um, than, than most anything else, because listening to you, uh, how you're evolving on your journey, um, and I will speak the same for myself, um, I like to think that I'm getting wiser with, with age and experiences and all. Um, with whether it's with my kids or the or or the countless number of guys I've worked with, I am me. You know, I I you know I I will sit and I will just let you see my truth. You know, and a lot of guys they want a mentor who's you know well he's up here because he knows this and he's had this experience and that's not me. You know, I will I will let you see my wounds. I don't care um, if if you know if you if you feel like oh well you know I'm better than you or you're better than me or or because that's a, a lot of hierarchy that goes along with guys, you know, um, and that's that to me, that authenticity um, is is worth gold because we could all relate to each other. We've all gone through these traumas and that's where the healing comes from in all the experiences I've seen. You know, it doesn't have to be like me telling anybody else like, well, look, this is the way to do it because this is what works and this is what's going to, you know, make you a man. This is what's going to make you money. That's, that's, that's BS. You know, it's, it's being authentic, sharing your heart, sharing your feelings, sharing your experiences in, in, with the intention to heal yourself and to offer that in service to others, you know, not trying to, to puff up the chest and say, Hey, look, man, this is the way we do it, <laughs> you know, because that's not authentic. So, uh, hopefully that answers your question. You know, just being authentic with yourself, with your kids, with with everybody is really um, is the best possible path I find to knowing thyself and to sharing and being of service. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, because that that came to mind is like what what are we passing down, right? What are our what are our core values of being that uh, we're influencing with our way of being just naturally, right? And that's something that you're doing naturally and you've done naturally with your kids. kids. And that's beautiful. And then the, thank you for providing that space of uh, authenticity and um, uh, relating and that organically relating. I think that's beautiful too. Uh, it makes me think about, and I want to also credit uh, the work of Do Dr. Gabor Mate. He, he, I started li listening to his work 10 years ago and that's when the whole somatic thing came came um um uh, in, into my life to do that um because you know Gabriel Mate addresses in you know, such a or uh, grounded way grounded spirituality I call it um uh, human suffering 
and uh, his perspective is golden. I mean, I, I highly recommend Gabe, Dr. Gabe Romate as well. And his documentary that came out that you mentioned, I saw it. And uh, he really addresses the core pain of suffering and the, the core wounds and uh, our longing to go back to wholeness. And yet we're all in this path, you know, talking about the, the balancing of uh, masculine and feminine and, and uh, hierarchies and not com competing, but leading by itself. Example. I think uh, uh, our presence, being in our presence, speak louder than uh, any kind of marketing. It's just showing up and uh, the heart meeting at the heart. So in that, I'm with you, brother, is just being able to meet anyone and elevate them. If you know someone, you know, some people, one of them, I, I see people that are amazing and things that I could learn from them. And it happens organically. They might be elevating me in an aspect that I need to grow into without needing to do much because it's just through loving presence. And so that's a beautiful way. I mean, that's one way. I mean, I know there's different ways. And, um, um, you know, you speak about uh, something with hierarchy and boundaries. I want to speak to that a little bit because the whole thing like with uh, also understanding our no's and our yeses in our, you know, like, in our relationship and then that connected to unconditional love has been an exploration that i think everyone can benefit from because we're redefining love like love has been defined by our cultural programming in in movies in stories in books and it's like the, it, there's always hurt and pain and suffering and and it's always like you did this and betrayal and then it feeds back into uh, not trusting the other person and it, it gets us into the space of, of uh, division and separation and uh, being hurt. And uh, we're, I feel like we're redefining love by in first knowing ourselves, knowing who we are and understanding and being clear on, on our yeses and nos in our boundaries so that we were, we're clear what aligns with us and what doesn't. Uh, because I personally, uh, at one point, um, I was saying I'm compassionate towards my ex-partner. I'm not going to give names or anything. One of my ex-partners, like I'm going to be compassionate towards my ex-partner. And uh, what I was getting back was, uh, emotional abuse and having new words that were hurtful. I'm like, okay, I forgave her. I then I done all the work. I forgave myself. And within some spiritual communities, they may say, oh well, you haven't forgiven totally. Like, yes, I've done years of that. I'm, I have no charge towards this person. I I have forgiven, but it doesn't mean that I I have to take someone else's pain or or projection or hurt. Because they they are in their own cycle of projecting yeah. their their hurt onto someone. I don't need to take that on, no matter how compassionate or in the heart of Christ I am. If you want a Christ consciousness, whatever you want to call it, Buddha heart, Buddha Buddhahood, uh, uh, there is a boundary. There's like I love that person, but I it, I don't. It does, this person doesn't have to be <laughs> in my in my personal sphere because it's it's not a healthy um, influence for myself. So therefore, I say no. Thank you. <laughs> I'll yeah. pass on that. Uh, does uh, that make sense? Or I I have been re redefining what unconditional love is. It's like I could love you, but it doesn't mean you have to be in my life because where you are and what you're doing is 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 not is unconscious and it's hurting. It's hurtful, and that person is not taking full accountability of their actions and choices, or I, I'm not taking full responsibility for what they're saying and doing. You know? Yeah. No, absolutely. Very good points. I mean, that's uh, that was a hard lesson for me learning as well. You know, healthy boundaries, and it doesn't mean that you're doing anything uh, harmful or hurtful other than protecting your own heart. So I think that's a really very good point. You know, we, we, we do need to protect ourselves from those energy vampires and people who don't have our best interests at heart. And uh, that doesn't mean we don't love them, uh, but they don't have to enter our space. So that's a, that's a very good point you made there but protecting ourselves. So before, so we're just about out of time, my brother. So like uh, anything left unsaid you'd like to share with the listeners? I'm just grateful for this conversation. I I, I call in my heart that it's, it could serve anyone here and that uh, it's a benefit to anyone who's listening. And uh, 
it's always good to have conversations like this. And to my wish is to grow community and to be in conversation and uh, communal experiences where people are nurturing their soul and their um, essence, their ability to bring their gifts out into the world. I wish for everyone to be able to be seen in their brilliance. And uh, I'm just, I want to thank you for creating the space and uh, welcome me, welcome me, me here to be here today with you. And uh, it's a great service you're providing, Waska. It's a very heartfelt. So thank you. Uh, thank you, my brother. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. And, uh, you know, it's it's that, that combining energy that of, of the love, that unconditional love and that that elevation of, of others um, is what we're doing here. So um, so it's my honor as well. Uh, always happy to support you, my bro. And um, and hopefully whatever was meant to be heard by by the audience who will be heard. And um, so why don't you uh, share your uh, your contact information for anybody who wants to connect with you. Well, sure. If you're interested in anything that I do, you could go to my page, thecollectiveevolution.com. Um, you could sign up to sign up for the private Facebook group there, or you could shoot me an email to visionarygustavo at gmail.com, visionarygustavo at gmail.com. And then you could ask uh, to connect with me and we'll take it from there. Beautiful, beautiful. Yes, I will have all that information in the show notes and uh, this has been a pleasure. And as I always close, I just offer that we just continue to illuminate our paths with love and kindness in our words, our thoughts, our deeds, and as we walk the earth. So namaste. Namaste. Aho. Visit IlluminatedWarrior.com if you'd like to go deeper and find out more about what's available within the Illuminated Warrior men's transformational community. Tune in next time for more candid conversations for men and women about men on the way of the Illuminated Warrior talk show every Thursday at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. Eastern time on Dream Vision 7 Radio Network. Until next time, illuminate your path with loving kindness.